Jakey. So our first challenge is to get to our first waypoint. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to use a transit. I'm doing it gently so I know where the hell I am in terms of the... Um, I don't want to jive the seal. So that part of the plan is going well. But the plan as to sticking to a particular triangle and getting to the waypoints, etc, etc, has completely gone out the window. Well, Beverly and I are planning to go out and we're planning to do some dead reckoning. So what we've done is we've marked three points on the chart um, and these are in a good position for the expected wind because we want to be able to sail across the wind, downwind, and another across the wind. This is the plan. Um, and because we're going to be using dead reckoning, what I've been looking at on the chart is some local landmarks that I can use uh, for my dead reckoning. So um, Kilroot Chimney is a very, very easy one to pick up. So we'll be using the Kilroot chimney uh we should be able to use clog and jetty or maybe blackhead but another one that we can use is a little house which is clearly marked on the chart and the last one we'll be using is a spire which we can see from quite a good distance away but when you are doing uh, dead reckoning one thing you shouldn't do is have them across so, for instance, the chimney and the house, just line them up, they're more or less in line with one of our marks. So that would give very, very poor accuracy um, for that one. What you want is landmarks which are at 90 degrees to each other. So for this particular mark, the house and the spire, which are quite close, would be good. One of the things we're going to do to make this as realistic as possible is we're going to keep the GPS off at the helm station. So the helmer has got no references. We'll probably have to keep the autopilot off for the same reason because it does have headings and bearings visible on the autopilot. Though that's maybe not the same as having a GPS map. But we're going to turn our little GPS here on the chart table on and just adjust the brightness down because we'll be doing all that work upstairs using the ship's compass and this thing. This is a hand bearing compass. And we'll be showing you how it works later in the video, but this is going to be one of our primary navigation instruments today. We will also be making notes of uh, our positions and things that we have uh, derived using this rather than GPS. And we'll compare them with our track on that later when we come in. Now you may say, why on earth are you doing all that? Well, it's part of the Outmaster thingy, which we're uh, undertaking again, as you know. But GPS can fail. Um, it doesn't necessarily fail because the satellites go where clunk and drop out of the sky. Uh, there's been a lot of incidents around the world where people have jammed or interfered with GPS signals. So what are you going to do if you're driving around out there and all of a sudden the GPS says that you're in North Australia when you're in Scotland? Uh, somebody is fiddling with the GPS, the military, some malicious actor, who knows? Around here there's a lot of military ships that come out of Scotland and the Clyde. They do a lot of military exercises in the area and we do get notices from them saying there will be GPS interference on this day between that time and this time. So it does happen right here. So we're going to do this just to see how we go. We've got our chart. We've got our hand bearing compass. This will give us our position. The distance between two positions in a set time gives us our speed over ground, our velocity made good. So it's back to the old days. A harmy hearties and all the rest of it. Where's that parrot gone <laughs> that we had in last week's episode? I could do with them back. The hand bearing compass is a compass with a special viewing prism. You simply look at what you want to measure and read the bearing off the line in the prism. Well, I haven't even left the uh, dock yet and I've already uh, come across my first issue. Uh, behind me I've actually got two spires. So which spire is it that's actually on the chart? So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a bearing uh, from where I am and then uh, hopefully that will resolve the issue. That also gives me a good opportunity to actually use my hand bearing compass. So um, I've got 155 
on the left hand one and I've got 170, 171 on the um, right hand one from where I'm standing. So hopefully that should be able to get me to know which spire is which. So which one's which spire is which Bev? Well this is actually raises a very very good point, um, something that we've discussed before with other people which is expectation blindness. Okay, we've looked at the chart, there's a spire on it, it's the spire we're going to use for navigation. So we're not surprised to see a spire on the chart. We've looked at the back, there are two spires. We've come back and looked at the chart more closely and there are two spires. But we thought there was one because we expected one, because we were talking about one. It's a case of expectation bias and it's something you've got to guard against. You've got to be careful, you don't see what you want to see rather than what's actually in front of you. In front of us in the chart, two spires. So what are you doing Bev? Well I'm marking the bearings from one waypoint to the next waypoint because when you get to one waypoint you may as well know the bearing to your next one turn straight on to it. I mean why go griping or groping around trying to find the darn thing if you're fairly certain you're at one of them and you know the bearing to the next one then you've got a course to steer it. Why wouldn't you? So what are you using to uh, find your bearing? A good old Portland plotter. I could use the walking rulers and walk them up to the rows, but it's so much quicker just to do, put a line on the Portland plotter and then simply just read off. But that one there is at 278 if you're coming that way. And if you're going the other direction, it is 98 because we're not too sure which way we're going round the triangle yet. We could go around clockwise or anti-clockwise. So like runway headings, I'm putting both bearings in. So this runway here is 338158, or as it would be in aviation land, 3415. But, you know, that's what we're going to do. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen the walking rulers, we were given these by one of our followers. We did have a set of board, but they were open beat up. So what you generally do with these is you put them on the line you want, like that one there, and then you can literally just walk them back until they meet up on the compass rows there and then you can read the bearings off on the compass rows on the chart and that's how these work so you have sort of a if you're out here somewhere you might have to sort of walk them back quite a distance whereas the good old Portland plotter you just stick it on draw your line set the bearing to north using the chart lines and boom you've got two bearings it is so much easier to do we could use the walking rulers but we're not going to use them today um, we're going to go back as, in technology as far as a plastic plotter so our first challenge is to get to our first waypoint. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to use a transit between the RNLI um, lifeboat station and the second spire. So that's my transit and then what I've got to do is I've got to do a bearing um, to the little house. So. I'm going to be getting my exercise today, running up and down the stairs, I think. Yeah. Because Beverly is very insistent that I do not have the chart up here in the cockpit. Seriously, because... you think it's going to stay aboard? <laughs> I mean, come on. I've got 25 knots of wind coming across the deck. Uh, the other one steamed up, just like uh, me, the navigator. Uh -huh. <laughs> right, are you ready on the main sheet, not, not the jib? Okay, I'm ready on the main sheet. All right, because we might have to jibe this one. Okay. Okay, 338, you said? I want a steering, uh, sorry, course of 338. Okay, keep an eye on that. Uh... So I'm keeping an eye on the main sheet. We're off on the course. Now, now it's just a case of finding out how good a uh, using of the Brayton plotter I am. <laughs> okay, coming around. Oh. I'm doing it gently so I know where the hell I am in terms of the... Um, I don't want to jibe this sail. That's just the Jenny getting blanketed. 
us three four zero. Okay, that should do it, shouldn't it? Yeah. Right, shall I, I put the jenny? I'm it out a little bit for the jenny. I was going to say, do you want me to put the jenny away? It might be an idea, to be honest. Basically, um, oh, sorry. Give it a yank and then put the lever down. Basically, the uh, jenny has been completely um, blanked, blanked it out. So, uh, I'm going to have to stir about 3, 4, 5 or 3.50. I'm going to have to do a training run. Okay. Otherwise, we're going to jive them in. Okay, well, we'll do that then. The main thing is, we're going to see what the dead reckoning tells us we are. Hopefully, it's not going to tell us we're dead. <laughs> Which is what it used to mean in the old days. If you reckoned wrong, you were dead on a reef. We're trying to avoid that. You're not quite touching, you've got a double loop oh, right Oh, it's here. not, it's not. Got too much tension on the other side. Yeah. wanted a particular course to steer, but in practice, <laughs> I'm a sailboat. You have to go with the wind. But as long as uh, we can go for, um, you know, say 20 minutes and then I can plot our position and it agrees with um, the GPS position, I'm going to class that as a as a win. So in 20 minutes I'm going to do another position but um, one of the things that I had issues with is um, I had two houses and I could see one house and but is that the right house on the chart? So you do have to be very very clear as to what landmarks you use. calculations we are east of our waypoint that we wanted uh, but I, I reckon in about another few minutes we should be there but I am doing plenty of exercise running up and down the companion way but uh, I'm making her life hell every so often I say what's my course to steer and she has to run down and work it out <laughs> oh you really can tell why um, uh, people love their chart plotters and love their GPS because, uh, yeah, I can see why they called it dead reckoning. To be fair, this is not what you've done on a much longer passage and you wouldn't be quite as frantic. Well, that is fair, that is true. Um, and um, well, It's a gusty day, it's a lumpy sea and we've got a jibe today. So, uh, all good fun and games. <laughs> How long do you reckon till our waypoint? I'm going to do another uh, point in a minute. is going well but the plan as to sticking to a particular triangle and getting to the waypoints etc etc has completely gone out the window because it's really difficult to um, sail to a waypoint uh, because you've got to consider the winds um, and um, other factors 
Sailing on a leading line is a lot easier and we have tried to use transits today um, purely between the RNLI um, lighthouse, uh, sorry, the RNLI station and one of the spires. Uh, so we've tried to do that today. But uh, yeah, sailing on a uh, course. So what we're doing now is um, in a bit we're going to tack and I'm going to take a three point positioning doing the de dead reckoning um, you know three bearings to the position and then we're going to compare it with um, the GPS later so at least um, we're trying out and we're making mistakes and that's what helps when you're doing any type of learning try, learn and uh, improve on what you're doing and as long as I know how to do uh, a dead reckoning, uh, we should be good. Yes, but it'd be nice to be good at it. It would be good, nice to be good at it. Okay, ah. so it's the um, it's the uh, the post sale analysis. It certainly is. Mm. So um, the first thing is uh, we tried to sail uh, using uh, dead reckoning uh, to a particular waypoint. The good news is we're not dead. <laughs> <laughs> now I found that very very difficult and uh, getting Beverly to navigate to that was very difficult but yeah, from my point I navigated the boat purely by the boat's compass yeah but and I was the one who was giving Beverly bearings and things like that oh, so it, I was it, doing it, the navigation it gave me great pleasure when she said right reach the right point and I said I lost my course to steer and she go oh, oh, <laughs> trump back downstairs again <laughs> so I was getting lots of exercise however we did sail the triangle and you can see here in this uh, screenshot from marine traffic that the triangle that we drew is here it's a wee bit out of shape but then we had to compensate for the wind one of the courses we wanted to go on we'd have been absolutely too close to wind yeah so we had to widen it out a little bit which put us a little further out to sea and then we compensate it on the next tack in mm. so you know we did sail a triangle and i'm quite happy with that Mm -hmm. Now, what I was trying to do, I uh, was trying to use the cocked hat um, to get my position. So what you do with that is you get a landmark and you get a bearing to the landmark and then you want a couple of bearings to different landmarks and you need them at 90 degrees at least to each other. I actually had uh, one bearing. Um, and they were actually in line with where I was. Yeah, you were reading the bearings out to me and I said, yeah, that's a reciprocal bearing, it's no use. Yeah, so in my case, it was uh, kill route, which is very easy to see, and uh, aspire. But as Beverly said, they were reciprocals of each other. So yeah, they, I was a... they, they were 180 degrees apart. So when you draw the lines on the chart, it's only one line. You don't get two lines to intersect. You've only got one line and you're somewhere on it. Yeah, so, you know, so they were no good um so i used a house and my problem was um i got there and there was actually a couple of houses part of the reasons that we were out on this is you were actually measuring the wrong house at the start of this you were using the wrong house exactly so that didn't help either <laughs> you know and it's finding the right house that's marked on the chart the one on the beach the one on the beach to the house that you're looking at and i was on the wrong house the house of the rocks I was. I was on the house on the rocks, not the house on the beach. But so that that would put me out. Yeah, I mean, if that other house is like half a mile further east, then that is going to put you half a mile further east because the lines would be parallel. Yeah. And we were out by about half a mile. Yes, we are. <laughs> so, you know, that's something that you've got to bear in mind. Having a waypoint or a landmark that is clearly visible, like for instance, we found um, that um, Blackhead Lighthouse was very easy to see today uh, because it was lovely and white uh, against the hillside. 
So it was very easy to see. The hillside um, being black. The hillside being black. Thus the, thus the name. Yeah, black head. Uh, and kill root round this area is always good. It's like going into Dublin with those, chim those twin chimneys. Yeah. So that was very good. And By then, the way, for those of you who don't know, Kill Root is a power station with a 200 metre chimney. So, as you can imagine, quite easy to see. You can see it from Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's um, the Elsa Craig. <laughs> that's only because we can see the Elsa Craig Actually, from the here. Elsa, the Elsa Craig would make a brilliant waypoint if you're anywhere in the Clyde. Well, it would. because or a brilliant landmark. Well, it is a good mark, landmark because you can see, see it from anywhere in the Clyde. <laughs> and it's got a big point on top. You can see it for miles. So, um, so basically, we made some cocked hats, um, and um, one particular cocked hat was very accurate. Um, all the waypoints, all the lines, uh, came to the same transaction, um, same late, point, same point. And strangely enough, that was the one that we were actually on track. My, the Jeep, the, the GPS, GPS was right on top of it. Right on top of it. So I was really pleased with that. Whereas another one over here, my cocked hat is a lot larger, and um, we were actually about half a mile out. Oh, wow. <laughs> so so why, why do you think that second one was so bad? I Which... might have had the wrong house again. Mm -hmm. So you know, I'm obviously. Do you think the motion of the boat helped? No, finding um, some areas I had my the motion of the boat was very steady. I could get a good bearing, whereas other times the pet the bit the deck was pitching, so I was out by plus or minus five degrees. You know, so you're having you're going from one ten to say one twenty, so you're picking a bearing of one one five, um, and it, just hoping that's about right. It's not going to be accurate, is it? It's not going to be accurate at all. Some, some other things before people ask them in the comments section. We did not correct for magnetic variation or deviation, whatever you want to call it, because this part of the world at this time of year, it's very nearly zero. Mm. So the magnetic north and true north are so close together. As Skinner says, the pitching of the boat means the compass swung by about five degrees in either direction. That's less than the uh, actual variation shown on the chart. So there was no point in trying to correct for that. Uh, the other thing we did was we sailed the boat with all the GPSs turned off except the one downstairs and we had the screen turned off for that. Uh, we did leave our AIS on and we were able to pick our track up later on marine traffic. Which is why we can say how accurate we were and realistically we were about maybe yes. half. This little area down here where you're talking about at the minute, what the reason that's sort of very ziggy zaggy rather than being part of a triangle is because we'd reached the, wet, the waypoint at this end and we decided it was time to go in and we were sailing in we were sailing in we were tacking and so these are the tack tracks and they agree pretty much with what we've got on our little uh, chart plotter down here and also what you can see in marine traffic so that's why we've got the zigzags down here mm. but um it was good fun and um i think i know a little bit more now about dead reckoning and although okay I could be dead on half a nautical, was it? Half, half a nautical it? mile. Half a nautical mile. Yeah, I think I need more practice, but other on, than on that... A normal, on a normal passage being half a mile out, probably wouldn't be, for most passages, a big deal. Mm. I mean, in, in real terms, it would be the difference between arriving at Ballyhome Bay and arriving at Bangor Marina. I mean, it probably would even be that, actually. Mm. We have a little gilders. No, it's not even. It's not that. even that. You you would wind up on Sea Cliff Road, and the marina would be in sight. Mm. So, so it's not completely out of kilter. Now that you've done this, has it given you an appreciation for cockpit automation and GPS? <sighs> Absolutely. We are so lucky having GPS 